down the floor here for Ben. Oh, what a Maybe. pass, Tessa Levy! Finds Whittle free for her first three of the game and nails it. Six seconds to shoot. George is all by herself. Melbourne Boomers escape with a miraculous two-point victory. It is round 13 of WNBL and it tips off with a Wednesday night clash in Hobart as the informed Bendigo spirit face the reigning champion Southside. The Flies have endured a tough campaign, crippled by injuries and illness. They enter tonight on a four-game slide. While the Spirit, they're on the upswing. They've won three of their last four. Flies coach Cheryl Chambers pleased with their team's fighting spirit. They're going to need all of that tonight against Bendigo, who defeated them by 16 points last Saturday. As we welcome you into Wednesday night, WNBL, Jason Bennett alongside Jenny Screen for the Spirit and the Flies. Welcome, Jenny. And we've got the unusual scenario tonight of last year's winless wooden spooners entering as warm favourites against last year's reigning champions. It's crazy, isn't it? And that is sport. You just never know what's going to happen. And, and credit to Bendigo. They, they came back on Saturday after a not-so-crash-shot start on Thursday in their loss to Adelaide and gave Southside Flyers a little bit of smacking in the, the fourth quarter. But I think Southside may make some adjustments tonight defensively especially, and we hopefully will have a contest. We're hearing that uh, Southside have had some illness in the group this week. They've had three players that have been ill. Rachel Jarry flew in late last night after coming out of the protocol, so she's going to take her place. But big news, Christy Wallace won't be out there tonight. So more trouble for the Southside Flyers who just haven't been able to get that consistent lineup on the floor all year. Bendigo have had their problems as well, but look at the difference it makes the last month or so when they have been able to get their best players out on the floor on a regular basis. Suddenly the whole season's just gone whoop. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Annalie Mayley, it's been the, the Mayley show. We've been riding the train all season, but it's nice to see the likes of McKay and Garrick, who have been recruited to make contributions on the scoreboard and also defensively as well, that they came to play on Saturday. I thought McKay was sensational. She had 22 points and was a target down low uh, for the Bendigo spirit compared to Thursday night where she got into a little bit of, um, you know, trouble offensively and turned the ball over quite a lot. And then Garrick, she was pretty quiet in the fat that second, first quarter and second and then in that second half, she went from two points to 18 points and was a huge difference for the Bendigo Spirit. Bendigo Spirit have been undersized most of the season. They're used to playing against larger opponents. Tonight, with the outs that the Flyers have got, they've actually got the size advantage. It told on Saturday night, M McKay and Maylie were dominant inside the paint. Speaking to Cheryl Chambers this week, she said one of the things they have to do is try to box them out a little bit better, reduce the points in the paint, <laughs> and have a bigger presence inside. Easier said than done. It is, especially when it's Annalie Maylie and she's averaging five offensive rebounds. And on Saturday night, she had nine for the game. That's a nine other opportunities she has to put points on the board. So they're, they're scrappy. They make you play hard. They're gritty. They're resilient. And they've shown they just never give up. They've been undersized, as we mentioned. They've found their identity, though. They're hard. They're fast. They're physical. They play a real up-tempo style. They're super competitive. They just don't quit. I mean, the mental fortitude they showed to be down... 30 love, which is a tennis score, yeah. not a basketball score, and they managed to come back and almost win that game. There's not many teams that can just, that old cliche, forget the scoreboard, just play every play, but they managed to do that, and that just shows mentally as a group, they're really strong. And I think they took a lot of positives out of that scenario. They, you know, leave the first quarter behind, let's just focus on quarter by quarter, compartmentalise it all, and they've used that momentum now, and I think that's really positive for them, and hopefully they can just have a nice run into the last part of the season, because let's be honest, these teams, they're not going to be fighting for the finals, but what they are fighting for are contracts for next season, potentially getting call-ups to play for the Opals at the World Championships, and, and they're the things that are important. Um, so for these girls right now, there's still a lot of pride uh, on the line in terms of what they're playing for. And for a spirit perspective, they're building something. They're building something for the future here. They brought in a totally different starting five this season, and they're finally starting to see that gel, Jenny. And as we said, they've found their identity. Players have now worked out where they fit into the overall picture. Yeah, and I think the exciting thing about playing against Southside Flyers, who we know, you know, on paper, you would say that they're, they're more skilled, they've got more talent than um, than their counterparts, Bendigo Spirit, but careful, they don't... Careful, <laughs> But they can't match them in their tenacity. And right now, Bendigo is leading the league, I believe, in their tenacity, their grit, their resilience to just work hard and find ways to get things done. The question is, can the Southside Flyers, now without Wallace um, and the like, and then they've also got some injuries as well and some sicknesses, can they use what they have to the best of their advantage? And hopefully we'll see blitz up tonight a lot more considering she got into foul trouble. Yeah, Cheryl Chambers, their coach, philosoph philosophical this week. She said last year things fell into place for us. This season they haven't, and that's just sport. Sometimes that's the way it goes. So all you can do is stick together, keep showing up, give your best effort, and they've been focused on living with kindness and looking after each other. 
And the reality is adversity like this can strengthen the bonds within a group for the future. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's the special thing about playing sport. No matter what it is, that you can um, develop some type of resilience, grit, um, perseverance, those type of things. And both these teams have had their adversity all season. Um, but one thing I love right now is these two uniforms, I must they? admit, Jason. I think they're phenomenal. And I wish I could find one big enough to fit my belly. But... Um, you know, I wish think I could find one big enough to fit mine. <laughs> I think they're absolutely fabulous. Yeah, they are. There's, it's a lot to be said. And I saw Damien Arsenis, who from Pick and Roll, was on um, Twitter this morning making the suggestion that that logo, the WNBL logo, the Indigenous logo, maybe that should be the permanent WNBL logo. It's striking. It's unique. It stands out. It's different. Well, when I saw it behind you in studio, I was like, wow, that is powerful. It not only has a connection and relevance in terms of basketball, but it has a connection to, to us as a nation and the Indigenous culture. So a little bit of confusion here. I think around the starting lineups here between Tracy York and uh, Cheryl Chambers. Is the paperwork matching the lineup on court? <laughs> Cheryl looking non nonplussed. <laughs> I don't think it would actually change who she starts because she doesn't, you know, the options aren't really there. Interesting, you've got Jenna starting on the bench again. She'll be a nice pack and punch off the bench. Christy Wallace normally plays that role as well. They won't have her impact, but hopefully they'll be able to call on the likes of Ch um, some other players, Saray Taylor, um, Chelsea D'Angelo, and hopefully Katie Gaze. Um, she's been a bit quiet of late, um, and I hopefully she'll have a big game tonight. So this is still not resolved, whatever this issue is, and we can only assume that it is something to do with the starting lineups. The paperwork not matching the lineups. I think the words were something like, you weren't starting, but then I look at the lineup for Bendigo and there's no one particularly you would think that should shouldn't be starting that is to be honest unless it was Tessa Levy but I would be surprised if that was the case uh, we'll try and find out more from for you as to the confusion here before the game starts Bendigo looking to keep their late season momentum rolling Southside looking to snap their four game losing streak Referees uniforms look fantastic as well. The indigenous version of those. A couple of X boomers there. Beck Cole and Matty Garrick, who of course play together in the Australian three X three team, having a bit of a laugh. There's Mega McKay, big role to play tonight. And we are away. Indigenous round tips off with Wednesday night WNBL. The Spirit and the Flyers from My State Bank Arena in Hobart. First possession of the Flyers, he's blitz up. He's got into foul trouble early the other night. Her size is going to be important, as Will Harmon's be, and Emily Harmon for the opening two of the game. But Cheryl Chambers saying they have to be better inside, both defensively and offensively. They have to keep the spirit out of the paint, force them into longer shots. Because the other night it was McKay and Maley just getting to the rack, and Maddie Garrett can do that. She's happy to take the longer shots. And that's what I, the first long two. And that's what I want to see Maddie do more of, is just turn, catch, and shoot on the airtime of the pass. She's into her footwork, and, and she's got a beautiful shot. Uh, less dribble, more time, and just putting it up on the rim, and, and chances are it'll go down. Rochi to Harmon. Good start for Emily. Good start indeed for the 31-year-old, her first season in the WNBL. She's relishing in these opportunities through sickness and injury to be starting, and it's going to be tough for her tonight against that one, Megan McKay. Maley dumps it inside to McKay. Sharp start from both teams on offense. Maddie Rochi, 29 points, had a breakout game. The last time these sides met, oh, Amy Rochi couldn't quite finish, but got a good look. Maddie Rochi looking to make the transition from a, a one-two type Jenny to a, a point guard, a pure point guard is the plan for Maddie. Well, she excelled last game on Saturday with her 29 points, I believe, you know, well above her season average of 10 per game, four rebounds and three and a bit assists. Um, and that is something that she's going to have to do is become that pure point guard. Want to score, but the ability to create for others well as well, and also have the ability to lock down defend defensively against Maley other point guards. Draws a crowd through Wilson, through Garrick and McKay, the and one. Good ball movement there from Bendigo. Well, it's pretty much starting how they did on Saturday night. Their ball movement, their player movement, their deep penetration. And you can see there Garrick getting deep into the paint and then McKay just working off her really nicely as a post player and able to finish with a, a three-point play. That worked well for them uh, on Saturday night. So no doubt they'll be going back to that well and, and that's probably being reinforced by their coaching staff. Can't finish the extra. 
Cole to Rochi. Such fierce competitors in this south side lineup. They'd be hurting right now. It's been such a tough campaign. They're a proud unit. They've lost four on the trot. Expect some fight from them tonight. Still got some experienced winners on this team who will not give up. Here's Levy to Garrick. McKay settles inside. Working on Rochi, has the size advantage, receives from Wilson, kicks to Maley. Beautiful work from Glitzarves. And that's the sort of defensive intensity Cheryl Chambers is looking for. Yeah, great rotation. But let's have a look at the mismatch. Megan McKay is going against the point guard, Matty Rochi. There is a height advantage and a strength advantage. McKay, she started so well, just continue to go out the rim. That would have been two points. Maybe to Wilson. Active hands there. Shot clock runs down to two. Wilson takes it to the rack herself. She's been a good addition late to this program. Bendigo Spirit, a late signing after Leilani Mitchell has stepped aside for the season. You know, adds a bit of punch. She's got some length, can score and, and able to get to the rack. Lutzarves kicks it out. Harmon, Rochi, can't get it to drop. And Maley picks up the first of her 318 rebounds that are coming tonight. <laughs> Off to McKay. And she finishes. Both coaches... Well aware that that inside game tonight for Benigo could be the key to this match. How does Southside keep McKay and Maley from dominating inside? So far it's been McKay establishing the inside position and maley has been happy to roam. Rochi. Blitzarves. Huge role to play tonight. And that's a great start. Blitzarves was pretty quiet apart from the first quarter on Saturday night. She did have seven points to lead or score as the Southside Flyers, but just, you know, a few errant fouls and those type of things. And you can see now that there seems to be a little bit of 2-3, Jason. You mentioned this pregame uh, in talking to the coaching staff from Southside Flyers that they might play a little bit of zone to protect the paint, which they gave up 55 points in that game on Saturday. Rochi confronted by Wilson. Knocks it out of her hands. Rochi wanted the call, didn't get it. Sure, uh, yeah, Cheryl Chambers... <laughs> And Tracy York know each other so well. Tracy fully expected that Cheryl was going to bring the zone tonight. So they've been practicing it, the Benigo spirit this week, working hard on it. That's what you get when you have two coaches, two veterans who know each other so well. They can read each other's minds. They know how they're going to react. And when they get to play each other twice in the space of three or four days, they know what they're going to bring. Exactly. Now it's a case of who can execute. And right now it's Bendigo. They're, they're getting the rebounds off the rim and, and being able to push the ball early, which is really nice. That 4-5 relationship between McKay um, and obviously Maley is pretty nice at the moment was, as we see Rachel Jarry coming up with a nice turnover and then Gary doing the same to the Southside Flyers. Off to Levy. Now Wilson. Cole busy in defence. Wilson wants to go herself. Short and wide. Somehow Maley gets a rebound. Dumps it off to Wilson. And the Spirit lead by six. They're so quick and athletic, the Bendigo Spirit. This team has come such a long way this season. Brand new starting five at the start of the year. There's no chance to really get any sort of consistent flow. They missed an entire month of basketball after Christmas due to COVID reschedulings. And Levy on Rochi draws a foul. But we've seen they've been able to find their rhythm, find their mojo, and most importantly, find their identity. And, and that's important because you've got to remember that their signing, Leilani Mitchell, would have been their identity. Like, that, that team would have been made around that player, considering the, the exceptional player that she is and has been, not only in Australia, but around the world in the WNBA and, and in Europe. So that take her out of the lineup. That is a completely different showing that Bendigo now have to remake and, and find a way to, to get things going. Done it well on the flight. Garrett receives from Levy. Now Maley. Now Wilson. Wants to get it to Maley. Working on Rochi. Help defence was from Jarry. Maley gets her own board. Can't get it to go. Off the hands of McKay. Good work there from the Flyers. Such experience, as we say, on this team. Got some veterans. Great to see Rachel Jarry back. Coming out of the protocols. Flew in to Tasmania last night. They weren't sure whether she'd be able to play tonight. She's out there and suited up for her team, which is wonderful to see. Cole working on Garrick. Taken by McKay off to Levy. Garrick v. Rochi. Garrick puts the step on, drives, drops the shoulder. Bodies hit the floor. 
McKay, Maley, two. And right now you're saying this first six minutes of the opening quarter that Bendigo are owning the paint still. Rebound wise, they're dominating. They've got four offensive rebounds, 10 in total compared to Bendigo six. They're just coming up with those one percenters. Rochi draws the foul on Tessa Levy. Here's Matty Garrett clearing a path. This time it's McKay, turning provider for Maley. What a combination they've become. They have, and when, when Megan McKay understands how good she can be and the presence that she has, like she is actually a very big, strong body, um, that takes away a lot of attention. When, when that attention happens and she draws people to her, then that allows Annalie Maley the, the opportunity and the openness and the freedom to be front to bucket, create off the dribble, and rather having that pressure on the shoulders all the time, week in, week out. 25 years of age, Megan McKay, and you think, well, that's, she sounds like she's experienced, but really when you think you don't come out of college and she went to St Mary's, till you're about 21 or 22, went and spent some time in Germany, one season with the Fire, this is her first season at the Spirit, she's still so young, playing this game 28 tonight, this is Jerry, to Rochi, Cole, O'Hay into the game, immediate impact from the skipper. And that's what Jenna O'Hay has the ability to do, to come off the bench and just, she can take over a game. And we've seen her do it in the years past in the WNBL and, and um, contribute in ways that are, you know, sometimes irreplaceable. Her experience, her, her demeanour, reading the ball before it actually, or the play before it happens, uh, is what Jenna O'Hay is capable of. And she's also capable of that, knocking down some nice long shots as well. So the Flyers... Stabilised the situation. Margin back at four. Maybe the inbound to McKay. Now to Wilson. Just so active on offence. So much movement. As we mentioned, they've been playing small, fast all year. And now they're managing to add an inside game to that with Maley and McKay. The piece is really starting to come together. And, and there's an inbound turnover by the looks. So a cheap one there from the Flyers. Hands the ball back to Tessa Levy. Wilson cuts. Maley cuts. Ball goes to McKay. Wilson sets up outside. Cole off hands. Off McKay. Flyers get it back. Beautiful facility in Hobart, my bank, State Bank Arena. Saw Tracy Browning, the GM of the Flyers, this morning saying on socials that she's got venue envy. Yeah, indeed, and especially when they pack it out, when the jack jumpers are there. But I think it's just great that we're able to take basketball back to Tasmania. Um, the small identity that it has, um, but a, a huge following in terms of basketball, as we see Maylee just doing Maylee things and diving on everything, putting her body on the line, doesn't she? She just... <laughs> She needs to play in bubble wrap. Oh, incredible to watch. And they're the things that get your team up and about. You might be struggling in, in aspects and they're not. They're doing a great job in this first quarter. But they're the things and the momentum that you see a player do that. And you go, yep, we've got this. We can do this. I'm going to follow her lead. And that's been the DNA of this team all year. Tracy York saying the secret to their success really is that teams can't guard their effort. Oh. Hurl themselves, literally hurl themselves at every single ball. No. They hustle, they defend, they scrap, they fight, they never give up. And that's what they need to do in order to be competitive. And right now, they lead the league, in, in my opinion, in their ability to do that. Their intensity is outstanding, makes them a difficult prospect to come up against. Jerry can't quite get the user friendly. Now, Lavey on the burst pulls out and they'll set up. Mainly to her right. Confronted by Jarry. Bode comes in to lay a screen. Back to Levy. Thinks about the three. Works the long two with Bogue. Another good defensive set there from Southside. Rochi to Cole. Draws the foul. Much to the frustration of Tessa Levy. It's nice to see both teams with the ability to push the ball. They're getting either turnovers or defensive stops, and then they're getting out and running. And, and a lot of their players have the ability to put the ball on the floor. The biggest difference right now for my liking is, you know, Southside are 3 of 12, 25% from the field in this opening seven minutes in comparison to 8 of 14 for the Bendigo Spirit. So Tessa sits down with a couple of fouls, frustrated. Mary 
Goulding steps into the game for Levy as Cole makes them both, and it's a four-point game. Mainly to Garrick. Really found her feet, Maddie, in the last four or five games. Been outstanding. Goulding. Bogue into the hands of Garrick. Likes the long ball, down to three, goes herself. Offensive foul. Whilst Jenna O'Hay didn't really have position in terms of her feet and body, um, from that angle you can't really see it, but I think there was just an errant elbow there, an extension from Maddie Garrick, which forced the hand of the referees for the charge. Former Boomers teammates, Maddie Garrick and Jenna O'Hay. Rochi to O'Hay. Back to Rochi. Now Cole. Inside, nice ball movement, beautiful ball movement, and Jerry finishes. And basketball is simple when you do the simple things, you know, ball movement, player movement, inside, outside, get the defense to collapse, and then and you get easy looks like that. Cheryl Chambers on her scouting report telling us they want to slow the game down. They realize if it's turned into a track meet by Bendigo, that suits them. They want this game involving lots of sets. Take your time, run the 24 seconds at both ends, force Bendigo to do the same. Oh, hey, Jarry, another two. Talk about some contribution early from Rachel Jarry. I think she's waving at the bench there, sub, I need a, I need yeah, a sub gassed. coach, I'm gassed. I've just come out of COVID, I, I need a break, but she's um, put some great buckets and points on the board at the moment. Oh, hey, body presence in the lane, affects the shot of Wilson. Rochi wants the support to arrive, it comes in the form of Jenna for three, and Southside hit the front. And for mine, I think it's all on the back of Rachel Jarry. She's getting her hands to some balls. She's physical in the block at the moment, and then she's also being a presence on the offensive end, and that little tenacity from her is just giving the Southside Flyers a little bit of an edge. Nice pass from Bogue to Wilson, delivered it to where she was going to be. Garrick for three, can't respond. Maley against a couple. Spin move, can't finish. Goulding scrapping. Blitz Arps wins it. So Southside have managed to get the tempo to a level they're comfortable with right now. Lovely move, Blitz Arps. Blue by Wilson, couldn't finish. Bogue to Maley, down to the last 35 seconds. Maley, lovely spin on O'Hay. Can't quite get the two to drop, but she has drawn the foul on an incredulous Rachel Jarry who says, what for? Here's another look. Nice little spin move. And, yeah, fair call by Rachel Jarry, but uh, either way, great, uh, another rebound from Annalie Maley, and that's what makes her so potent as well as her ability to crash the defensive boards, but yet have the skill to be able to push out offensively on the break and, and create, whether it be for herself like she did just then or, or for her teammates. If uh, Annalie Maley is going to be put to a stop in this game and games to come, you can't compete with this girl in the air. You actually literally just have to find her, face guard her on any contest um, off the rim and, and hope that the rebound goes to someone else. Her offensive production has been astonishing this season. Something that Tracy York had no idea she was capable of. Said she was a great young talent. You knew you were going to get effort. You knew you were going to get offense. Uh, you were going to get rebounds on both ends of the floor. You knew you were going to get a real defensive presence, but this ability to just supercharge her offense this year, averaging 21 points a game, no one saw coming. And in the absence of Leilani Mitchell, it's been an absolute godsend for the spirit. Rochi receives from O'Hay, draws a crowd, opens the door for Blitzarves, and Blitzarves finishes. Impressive opening term this from Southside. Final play in the hands of Garrick. Down to three seconds, Cole guards. Garrick, tough shot. Rattles off the front of the rim and at quarter time, Southside on a six point run, hit the front at the end of the first term. It's Southside 22, Bendigo 20.
When we roll into the court with nothing to lose and everything to prove, you're in for a show. She got stars, she got balls, she got police, she got game. Quarter time in Hobart. Flies 22, Spirit 20. Bendigo led for most of that opening term. A six zip run at the tail end. Help the Flyers hit the front and claim a two point lead at the opening chain. Cheryl Chambers would be delighted with what she saw in that term. Jenny, early on, the athleticism of Bendigo looked to be a problem. Southside, with experience and talent and poise, managed to get the game on their terms. Yeah, in those last couple of minutes of the first quarter, you just saw some really good execution, some stops which allowed the flow to Southside Flyers in their transition game, but they didn't force anything. They were just looking steadily. They got to their two-player two um, pick-and-roll scenarios and just found the right players at the right time to be able to knock down those shots. Cheryl Chambers saying how pleased she's been at how this team has hung together through adversity. They've had each other's backs. They've fought hard on the court. They've looked after each other off the court. And their bond has been really strong. What's the message from Tracy York at quarter time? Keep doing what we're doing. I think, uh, you know, they'd be happy. They've got the momentum for most part there. I think uh, they've just got to be a little bit more particular on how they're going to defend the pick and roll action. They've had some great looks. They've got five offensive rebounds, 14 points in the paint in the first quarter. So whether that be from the likes of McKay there on screen, dominating down low, or Maddie Garrick and Annalie Maley getting deep on their penetration and finishing on the rim, it's working well for them. Now they've got to be able to stop the Southside Flyers in that first eight seconds of any t form of play. Bench points in the opening term, 10 zip in favour of Southside. Six to O'Hay and four to Jarry, the two veterans coming off the bench. Garrick receives from Goulding, steps back to the free throw line. Just not quite dropping so far for Maddie tonight. Here's Goulding, tidies it up, keeps it alive. McKay now inside to Garrick. Tough spot. Momentum was taking a out of court she had nowhere to go and you mentioned those bench points jace you know they only had eight for the entire game Southside flyers on saturday um, against bendigo so it's nice to see their contribution already on the flip side though bendigo have zero points off the bench and if they do have a, a squad that's been racked by illness this week they do need to share the load it's going to need to be scoring by committee tonight so points off the bench are going to be critical amy rochi blitz arms for another three made one from there in the opening term Mailey cleans it up. Six points, four boards for Annalie Mailey in the opening term. Now Garrick. McKay. Cassidy McLean's into the game. McKay just floats that one over the head of Annalie Mailey. Another good defensive setup there from the Flyers, who have achieved their goal early of slowing Bendigo down on offense, making them run sets, forcing them to move the ball around rather than getting those fast break points. Rochi harassed by Goulding. Cole back to Maddie. Weaves her way through traffic. Idea was right. Blitz Arms just couldn't quite make the stretch. I agree with you there. I, I thought that was a great idea. You know, hesitated a little bit. Just says just a little bit slow on that dive to the bucket. But I thought that was a great look from Maddie Rochi. Mailey against Blitz Arms. McKay again looks for that inside ball and once again Southside have got it covered. And you can see they're trying to go to that high-low action probably a little bit too a zealous in, in McKay's approach there and, and potentially that's where you want Anna Lee Maley. She's already got four assists for the game um, and her ability to pass is quite exceptional so if she's on that catch in the pinch post or that that high spot on the scene then she might have the potential to make a better pass but you can see because of the switching action on the south side they're trying to go in low quick. So south side by two points. No score so far in the opening minute of this second term. There's Abby Bishop and Christy Wallace on the left of that huddle. Both out. Abby for the rest of the season, unfortunately. An Achilles injury a couple of weeks ago. Likely to be an eight to ten week injury. Here's Tracy York. What a fantastic month they've had. Won three of their last four. Had some tough times in Benigo the last couple of seasons. Great, exciting times now for their fans and their volunteers, all the people around the club, their support staff behind the scenes. They've all done it tough. 
for a couple of seasons. And now they can start to see some light at the end of the tunnel with this young emerging group. And Jenny, when it clicks, it can, it can happen fast. It does. Um, and, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter who your opponent is. It's just about worrying about you. And I think that's what Bendigo have started to do. They're just worrying about what they're capable of doing, what their strengths are, what their roles are. And once, you know, everyone gets on from Bendigo, the Annalee Maley train and contribute just as much as she does. Uh, you know, it would have been interesting to see how their season had have played out if this had been the start of their season. Yeah, they may just run out of games to make the finals. Cole, Rochi. Draws another foul. Foul on Maddie Garrick. Her second. Levy also with two. While well, Jerry has two for the Flyers. So Maddie will sit down. So Maddie Rochi. Off to Blitz Arms. Drives to the hoop. Sarah Blitzars with a really important role to play tonight. She's up to seven points. Got into foul trouble the other night. And her size and strength at both ends of the court are going to be critical tonight. McLean to Levy. Maley, long two. Off the front of the iron. Here's Rochi scurrying away again. Off to Cole. Long deep three from Beck. No good. Blitz arms. Cole, now to O'Hay. Rochi busy as always. Wants to take on Maley, who stands tall. And that's where Maddie Rochi has to take her game to the next level. This is a great little handoff action between O'Hay and Rochi. But she's now drawn Maley. I would rather her keep her dribble alive, keep her feet on the ground, and kick to the corner where she had blitz arms on the weak side. That's just the recognition as she starts to get more experience in the league and grow as a point guard um, to make those, those adjustments to her game rather than always trying to go up against bigger, taller timber in the paint. Manny, 23 years of age, playing game 98 tonight. Cheryl Chambers telling us about Matty Rochi. She has been pleased with that development. But Jenny, talk to us through the difference between being a, a two player and a one player where two you focus mainly on yourself but one you've got to see the entire floor and manage everyone it's a very different role to play isn't it it is i mean the game has transitioned to uh you know there's a lot more scoring point guards in the game you know both men and women's game internationally these days so it's, it's really rarely do we see the likes of a let's let's bring up bendigo gray christy harrow the floor general can score but you're looking after everyone else you know the detail you know everyone's cutting and you're getting the job done and you can control the momentum that's the next day stage of maddie rochi game and taking it to the next level. We see another great high-low action there from Bendigo and Jenny Rintala getting her first points of the game. Great to see Jenny stepping in. Another recent signing. Been around the league a little while. Was a development player at Perth in 17-18. And then at Adelaide in 19-20, she replaced Crystal Langhorn from Minnesota. Spent some time in Germany and Luxembourg. And again, the spirit have enlisted her as an experienced veteran at 31 years of age. You can just step in and play a role for them, provide a little bit of size at 188 centimetres. Rochi combines with Gaze. Feeds it inside. Blitzarf, step back. Not this time. Amy Rochi. Out to Matty. Shot clock down to seven. Down goes Rintala. Rochi's got to get rid of it quickly. Gaze is a three-point shoot specialist. And that's a much needed bucket from Katie Gaze. We know that that name is synonymous with the ability to shoot, but she's been quite lulled since round nine, where she was quite dominant for the Southside Flyers with 16 points. And that gives them another punch off the bench. If she's knocking down shots, it's going to be a great game for Southside Flyers. 10 for 27 this year for Kate Gaze from three point range, going at about 35%. Down goes Jenna O'Hay. I tell you what's working well for Southside Flyers right now is this 2-3 zone. You talked about slowing down the game as we see Kate Gay's composure and poise as she up fakes and gets the defender out of her way. Sloppy close out there from Blitzarves, but an even better defensive rebound there from Jenna Hay. But that 2-3 zone is really slowing down Bendigo. They're not shooting great. They're none of four from the three-point line. They're not known for their three-point sh three shooting ability. So pretty smart in terms of Cheryl Chambers to th be brave enough to throw in this zone. Nice inbound from Levy to Maley for the two. Gets them back within three. Rochi thinks about putting some pace on it. Oh, hey, wide open. 
And she's been deadly from range tonight, Jenna O'Hay. She's three for three, nine points. Indeed. And maybe potentially coming off the bench for her is great. That just takes the pressure of her shoulders. She can focus on, you know, what she needs to do and, and just see the game from a different perspective rather than being in the starting five. And sometimes um, players really embrace that role. Benigo now none for five from long range. Southside five from eight. And there's your difference in the game. They lead by six. There's Demi Skinner takes a seat. Lavey inbound. Wilson has made plenty over the years, and they just needed that one. Bendigo, absolute masters this season at just hanging in, hanging around, sticking in games. Momentum might be against them. They find a way to just keep the gap manageable. And here's Maley. Wants to push it down the floor. Gaze clears out of the way. Gets it over the top. Here's Rintala. Back to Lavey. Rintala sets a screen. Harmon comes across. They switch. McKay for three. Or oh, just a pass. Mainly tidies it up. Cole puts the pressure on. Megan McKay, just her seventh three-point of temp for the season. She's now two for seven. So I saw you sit up straight, Jen, <laughs> when uh, the ball ended up in the hands of Megan McKay from long range. Well, you know, if you're south side flies, you're happy with that Megan McKay's taking the shot. We'll, we'll claim that it's a pass and... You know, Maylie coming up with yet another rebound. Eight to her tally already, averaging 15 per game this season. Three-point game, just over five minutes remaining in the second. Lavey the inbound. Again, looks for the little inside ball to Maylie. That would frustrate Cheryl Chambers. They almost got away with that twice in a row. And now they draw the foul. And that's 10 of offensive boards, you know, really sloppy, out of bounds defense here by the Southside Flyers. McKay, too big, too strong, and then able to draw the foul. But Southside Flyers have got to do a better job. We know that Bendigo, they love the one percenters. They get on the offensive glass. They average 15 per game, and they already have 10, and we're only in the second quarter. Breakout season, really, for Megan McKay, taking a, a primary role in a WNBL team. Just a second year in the league. Margin sits at two as we hit the midway point of the second term. Rochi, Gaze, Blitzarves, Cole, back to Amy Rochi. Southside sharing it around. Blitzarves, nice move. Lovely move. Sarah's putting on a show tonight. Elite move, yeah. I mean, she has a lot of energy in the tank after only playing 20 minutes on Saturday and probably a point to prove um, in terms of her contributions and they'd be relishing with what she's doing in this first half. Up to nine points. Game high with Megan McKay and Jenna O'Hay. Here's Wilson. Maley again over the top. McKay will take a long two. Blitzarves with the board. It's about taking on Rintala. Happy to shoot over the top. And now Levy. Rochi guarding. Okay, thought about the inside ball to Rintala, who didn't have position. Maley wraps around. Shot clock down to single digits. Maley wants to drive on Cole, then dumps it inside to McKay. Won't go this time. Harmon. Amy Rochi. Cole sets up to the left. Amy goes herself, draws the traffic, gets to Harmon. It's out off Bendigo. Flyers will retain possession. Cheryl roaming around, looking for some clarification. Just keeping what we say, the referees on their toes. <laughs> Just a polite inquiry. Good hands, Maylie. Gets it out in front of Jenner O'Hay. Amy Rochi receives from Cole. Down to three. Good pressure inside, but it can't stop. Sarah Blitzarves. She's in a double figures. Tough find there from Blitzarves to find Emily Harmon down low from the Southside Flyers. Now can they get a stop and push out this lead a little bit more with this 2-3 zone? 
And yes, the, the answer is yes. Goulding throws it away. Steph Blitzarves receives from Harmon, gets that inside position and finishes. Rochi again to Blitzarves. Now Harmon. Cole. Thinks about driving. Just flings a fairly agricultural looking pass and Blitzarves can just get a fingertip to it. Very different pace second quarter compared to the first. The first was very push the pace, eight seconds, get out and run off the defensive stops and, and off obviously off turnovers. But right now it's just log ahead. It was 20 to 22 with Southside, just the edge of the quarter time. Still continuing at the edge, but it's just a little bit harder to find baskets. Passes are just a little bit more errant or the catches are a little bit more errant. Everything's just a little bit harder at the moment in this second quarter. So that inside ball tonight just hasn't quite worked for them. They keep going there. They're getting the looks, but just can't quite get that pass to stick. Cole, Harmon. Now Rochi back to Harmon. Back out to Beck. Down to single digits. Harmon inside position. Waved away. Great two game here. She drew the D. Harmon just needed to see Amy Rochi out the corner of her right eye. And that would have been an open three for Rochi. But it looked like she might have got an yeah, finger. She might have got a finger in the corner of her see. right eye. <laughs> she didn't see Rochi there anyway. The timeout called with just over two minutes left in the second term. Southside sitting on a six point lead. They led by two at the first change. They've added. 12 to 8 in this second quarter. Let's take you inside the huddle. Here's Tracy York. So you, I, I love that you're saying you need to be a scorer and it's not just relying on Annalie Mayley. I'd love to see if they're running a lot of flex flex action for those at home. It's a, a baseline screen, which Southside Flyers got exposed very, very poorly in the game against Saturday um, against Bendigo. They got a lot of open shots off their flex cut. I'd love to see Annalie Mayley, though, in that passing spot where McKay is, just because what they're doing is they're dropping off and they're sagging and not putting any pressure on the pass, which means they're clogging up that ability to make that pass, whereas Annalie Mayley potentially has that opportunity to either to take a long two or a three. Maybe Wilson, here's the inside position. McKay, great D again from Southside, but McKay makes the tough shot drop. Going from strength to strength with this girl. I mean, I know it's only a second year in the league and, and she's obviously loving and relishing the opportunity at Bendigo compared to Townsville last year, but she's a big body and she's Australian. She, she takes up space, she's getting better. And, you know, I think any program in the WNBL next year will be looking to potentially sign Megan McKay as, as either a starting five or a backup five. And a real good combination starting to develop with Annalie Maley as a one-two punch. Wilson, Maley, not this time. Wilson gathers it up. Back to McKay. Now Levy for three. Just not dropping at the moment for Bendigo. They're one for nine from long range. Rochi to O'Hay. She thinks about the three momentarily. Off to Cole. Blitz arms. They kick it around again. It's in the hands of Matty Rochi. Great work, Maley. Heads up on every play. Feeds Levy. Rolls it in for two. Margin back to just two points. Final minute of the opening half. She to Blitz Arves to O'Hay. Maddie to Amy. Cole, Hay in the corner. 
Hay steps, draws a crowd. Out to Amy Rochi, it's short. And Levy wants to push the pace here. She's got Maley cutting to the hoop. Didn't spot her. Foul drawn. On Beck Cole. Bendigo have done a great job in the, the last couple of minutes of this second quarter. They've gone on an 8-0 run and pretty much off the back of that one there with steals like that and to the veteran in Tessa Levy. But this 8-0 run right now, just as the momentum as we, we round out and probably the second last possession of this quarter, just gives them a little bit of momentum heading into that, that second half and, and the break coming their way. Wilson lays it in for two more. She's got nine. Now sharing the load, 11 to McKay, 9 to Wilson, 8 to Maley. Maddie drives hard against McKay. Gets the foul. With 5.77 seconds rather left in the opening half. And that's where I'd love Rochi just to pull it out a little bit longer, run some time off the clock, just that little bit more. I mean, I mean, they had five players on one side of the court, but that just gives them a little bit more exposure. Foul called on Annalie Maley for the secondary contact there. Her first of the game. Oh, hey, it's got to be quick. Blitz up. She's had a great first half. And she's up to 13 points. And it is half time in Hobart. Entertaining game, this one. The Flyers led by two points at quarter time. That's the margin at the half as well. It's Southside 36. Benigo, 34. So 14 points apiece in that second term. McKay with 11, Wilson with 9, Maley 8 for Bendigo. Well, Blitzarves, as you mentioned, has had 13, O'Hayes had 9. Early on, Jen, in that first quarter, Bendigo keen to put some speed on the game, as we said they would. Southside managed to find a way to slow them down, and it was their defensive setup largely that did the job for them. Yeah, it did, especially in that second quarter when they went to that 2 3 zone. We know that Bendigo are shooting at one of nine from deep, 11%, but they're still owning the paint. That first quarter, they had 14 points inside the paint, whether it be through the likes of McKay or deep penetration from their guards. But Southside Flyers just found a way, and they had contributions from the likes of Gaze, uh, from the likes of Harmon, and then Jenna Hay obviously coming off the bench and doing a great job. Nine points. Points, three, three from deep. 16 points off the bench helps. If I was either coach, I'd actually be pretty happy with the contest right now. It hasn't blown out. There's a lot more defense happening in this game in comparison to the game on Saturday. And statistically, they aren't too bad. The only area that I would say um, Cheryl Chambers would love to clean up is those 12 offensive rebounds. Yeah, second chance points for Benigo. It's been such a key to their game for most of the season. And Annalie Maley, dominant once again in that department. She's had... Eight boards, five of those offensive. McKay's also had three offensive boards as well. So they're the two that coming in, Southside knew they needed to control. As so we bring you into the studio here at halftime, the Flyers by two points, 36-34. And we did mention the stats. And the key one, really, from a, a, in terms of differential, is that bench points, 16-2. to two. 16 bench points, outstanding. O'Hayes had nine, Jerry's had four, Gaze has had three. Yeah. And on a night where we know Southside are a little bit wounded, they've got some players who have carried illness all week, they're going to need to score by committee. And tonight, that's exactly what they're doing. Well, when your two bench players that are coming off in Rachel Jerry and Jenna O'Hayes are both Opals and have a lot of experience, that's a, that's a nice thing for Cheryl Chambers to have to go to off the bench. I think Jaff was really good in that first quarter, especially uh, created a lot of momentum, not just from her presence offensively, but also defensively. Uh, I think she brought a physical presence to the Southside Flyers outfit. And then Jenna O'Hay, she's just got experience and exposure and composure into her game, I think. You know, um, unleashing what she had in the last week with Megan Husswade and, and coming out about her mental health issues, I think has been a weight lifted off her shoulder. We know that every day is a struggle for her and we send our love to her, but it's nice to see someone of her calibre still being able to contribute and, and have a great season, or not so much season, but a great game tonight thus far. And Sarah Blitzarves, she's had a back injury early on. She had COVID issues to deal with, as so many of the players have. 
But tonight, again, we just got a timely reminder of her class, 13 points in the first half. And she did this on Saturday night. She had seven points in the first quarter, but then got herself into foul trouble in the third and then had to sit a lot. Uh, we know what she's capable of. She front to bucket. We, she's a big body, but can play inside and out, that three and four spot. Uh, predominantly for the Southside Flyers that had to play a lot of small ball, but she's being able to take the lights of Megan McKay off the off the floor, which is really nice. Penetration has been her her friend tonight, um, and she's also been able to drain a cut, one out of two from deep as well. So let's see if she can continue that and have a consistent 40 minutes of, of, of contribution to the Southside Flyers. So Benigo have conceded 36 points in the half. They've been averaging 81 points against for the season. And really, when we spoke with Spirit Coach Tracy York at the start of the season, she said defense is going to be the key for this new lineup. We have to be scrappy defensively. We know we've got to fight for every board. We've got to lock down as a team. We need to defend together. Took a little bit of time to develop that chemistry. But, Jenny, it's no coincidence. The last month of vast improvement for Bendigo, it's been off the back of defensive improvement right across the board. When you look at those numbers, they tell a story. They do indeed. And I think it comes from those 1% as we talk about, you know, that, that grit and resilience they show in, in the things that give them their points. Steals, 8.5 per game. That, that's pretty big. That means their deflections are high. They're up and in. They're making havoc for the, their opponents. And then their points off turners. No, not only are they able to get the stops, but then they're also rewarding themselves on the offensive end. And, and then you also have a look at the clip shooting wise. Um, their opponents are they're dropping in terms of their ability to shoot, whether it be from deep or um, their overall percentage, uh, which is really good. So for me, I think uh, Benigo have to keep continuing that momentum that they've shown, uh, and and obviously, hopefully, we see that in the second half as well. They started one and six. They've gone three out of four in the last month. Annalie Maley's been outstanding the whole way through, but the difference now, Jenny's come when the support's arrived. And it's now a team performance. And the likes of uh, um, uh, Ali Wilson and Megan McKay and Maddie Garrick have all stepped up in the last month. And it's pretty obvious, but it's a team sport. One player can't do it all. And the support's now arrived. No, and Annalie Maley has tried her hardest to do it all. And she's been exceptional in a lot of statistical categories uh, across the season in the WNBL. But Maddie, we know she struggled with that ankle and Achilles injury as well. And it's nice to find her find some form. And then McKay, like I said, spoke about and I've been really impressed with her numbers as well but let's not underestimate Wilson I think she's been a great pickup for them um, in the latter stages of this game and, and her ability to uh, defend and, and get hands to balls and be crafty and read the play has paid dividends for the, the Brit Bendigo spirit as well. So nine points as well to go with that tonight but yeah that defensive DNA has really come to the fore as you mentioned Ellie Wilson a veteran, exactly what this young side needs, playing game number 182 tonight. Describe her as a young veteran. She's still only 25 years of age, so she's the same age as Megan McKay, who's playing game number 28. Of course, Megan went through the college path, and Ali, well, you know, she's been in our system for such a long time. She was the rookie of the year way back in 2014. She was. She's been around, and, and that's the thing about um, Wilson. She, both of those players, McKay and Wilson, they played at the uh, under the, the World Uni Games under Chris Lucas. They had really good tournaments. McKay was very young then, didn't get lots of opportunity, but gained a lot of experience from that exposure and, and being coached by the likes of Chris Lucas. Ali Wilson, she was lucky to get picked up this year. She wasn't signing for anyone, and, and she was playing in the NBL 1. So she's obviously lavishing in the opportunity that she has to be back in this great league in Australia and, and hopefully she'll continue to see out this season very well. Well, Bendigo coach Tracy York knew she had a talented youngster when she signed Anna Lee Maley. After all, she coached against Anna Lee when Anna Lee was playing under 18s for Vic Metro and that day Anna Lee had 24 rebounds, if you don't mind, uh, against 24 for Tracy's entire team as they went down by about 20 points. So she knew she brought that um, uh, the, the rebounds and the defensive effort and the grit, what she could not have dreamt about is that she would give the spirit this level of offensive output. The rise in her numbers this year are, well, they're meteoric. Two years ago at Southside, she averaged two points a game coming off the bench. That rose to eight points last year with a career average coming into this season of four points a game. This year, she's having 21 points a game. She's gone from four to 21. And on a rebound front, six rebounds a game coming in this year. She's averaging 16 a game. She's tripled her assists as well. Jen, you've been around the league for a very long time. You've witnessed the emergence of some brilliant careers. 
Have you ever seen a greater single season improvement from one player? No, not at all. But sometimes it just takes the ability for someone to find their feet in a in an organisation, in a team, and, and be given a lot of trust and, and openness to be able to create. And, and Annalie has obviously been given that by coach Tracy York. And she's found her feet. You know, she came into this league young. She went to Oregon. We know that she's had her own battle, battles with mental health and, and finding herself. And I just feel like she's becoming a woman. She's turned from a, you know, a young player into you know, being comfortable in her, in her own skin now, being comfortable with what she's capable of and knowing her role and what she can contribute to the league. And I love that she's not only adding that tenacity of rebounds and possession game that we know she can do, but the ability to score has been phenomenal this season. So let's look at the overall MVP race then. Annalie Maley's gone from a bench player a couple of years ago to a starter last year, and now she's in the MVP race. We surveyed our expert analysts here, and here's what they've come up with as the top five likely contenders, or certainly five that are going to be in the mix for this year's MVP. Jen, your thoughts? Look, I, I think Amelie's up there. The only thing that will hold it against her is that it's a 3-2-1 vote, and most of the game, they've only won four games in comparison to the likes of Talbot and Sykes, who are pushing for the top four kind of finish. Um, so a lot of her votes may not be threes, um, and uh, but you can't take away from the those green numbers that you see there on your screen. For me, I think the top three are Talbot, Sykes, and Maylie. Maybury obviously has fallen by the wayside because of injury and hasn't contributed that as much across the board, apart from scoring and then Mitchell she's good and she's been great I called it early with her I thought she was going to be an MVP favorite but when you've got the depth of talent and like Tess Madgen and you've also got um, Kayla George and and uh, the rest of them Lindsay Allen LA they're going to take points and votes from you so for me I think Talbot whilst she's not dominating in points compared to Annalie Maley with 21 per game you've got to look at the rest of the categories that she's dominating and it's phenomenal she's almost at a triple double watch this season for most games that she's played so for me, I think it's going to be a, a, a three-way between Sykes. I, I love what she brings to the UC Caps as well. She's been phenomenal this season and a reason why I think they're going to probably finish top two. Um, but Talbot and obviously Maylie are going to be pushing. So it'll be an interesting race to, uh, f f um, to run out the season. It's interesting to look at the coaching situation with Bendigo and Tracy York and where they've come from and where they've suddenly just clicked. And... Um, the rise of Annalie Maley has been one thing. The emergence of the team around her, as we've discussed, has been really important. And suddenly a team that was winless last season and one and seven to start this year. Mm. So if you're a, a Spirit fan, even halfway through this season, you're still pretty shattered at how your team's performing. And suddenly, almost seemingly out of nowhere, although it's not, They've put together this incredible month of basketball. We've seen the signs. We've talked about it in their games. And sometimes it feels a little hollow, doesn't it? When you're one and four, one and five, one and six, everyone's pumping you up and saying, look, we can see bits of the game coming together. But with Bendigo, it's genuinely, if you've watched them a lot this year, you've seen that they've managed to build the building blocks. Yeah, and it's been tough. Don't get get me wrong in terms of some of their games have been, you know, grinded out. But I think that that game in, uh, against Adelaide in Adelaide, even though Steph Talbot and Alana Smith weren't playing, that just gave gave them a little bit of confidence. And then I think they've backed themselves since then. And, and obviously, once you're getting the contributions that we know from Maylie, but then as it was spoken about and harped on from the others, it makes Maylie's job a lot easier and it makes them a lot enjoyable to watch as well. Enough about the spirit for the moment. Let's flip out over to the Flyers. Obviously, it's been a really tough campaign for them, <laughs> but we've seen tonight the talent that they've got. When they can get the game on their terms, they're still super, super competitive. And they've just been able to grind out what's been a really tough season, but they're right in this game. They are very much in this game. And I don't know whether they've all walked under a ladder or a black cat was walked in front of them this season, but they've had roadblock after roadblock. So we have to take our hat off to them in terms of being able to grind through those adversities. Now, we've got to see if they can um, put this one to bed. Um, I thought they had a great third quarter. Well, they didn't start the third quarter on Saturday great. Um, they went down by 14, but were able to, you know, tie the match uh, at the end of the third uh, against the Spirit on Saturday. So hopefully we can see them be able to put the next 20 minutes of basketball together, get the same contributions. They keep their starters on the floor and, and um, find the players when they need. Cole's one that's been pretty quiet. She's only had two points. Um, up until this point compared to her 19 points on Saturday. So watch out for her in this second half as well. Both teams looking fantastic in their Indigenous uniforms. The first Indigenous round for WNBL, round 13. And nice to see some of the, the jack jumpers and the NBL players uh, watching courtside and supporting uh, this uh, great game of women's WNBL as well. So all set to go in the second half. It was Southside by two points at the first change. They lead by two at the half. Third quarter underway in Hobart. 
Rochi has it to Blitzarves. Maddie with just the one point in the first half. Rochi doing the um, Blitzarves doing the bulk of the scoring. She's had 13. Rochi quick hands. This is Amy Rochi on this occasion. Now needs some support to arrive. It does in the form of Maddie. Harmon looks to try and set a screen. Pressure comes from Wilson. Rochi, nice inside ball. Harmon works on McKay and draws a foul. Here's another look. Emily Harmon, 31 year old, originally from Pickerington, Ohio. Played a college ball at Ohio State University. <laughs> Playing just game nine tonight in her WNBL career. She's been the basketball development coordinator for the Dandenong Association for the last year or so. Having previously been in the Nutterwadding, Launceston and Albury Wodonga program. So she's been around Australian basketball for a long time. Great to see her now get a chance at the top level. And playing an important role tonight for Southside as Laby. Off to Maley and now Garrick. McKay just floats one over the top. That play, they keep going to it, Jen, but they're probably one for 15 for it tonight. No, I mean, the execution and, and the want and the desire is there, that you want to get that high-low action, especially against a 2-3. We can see the Southside Flyers are sticking to it because it's working for them. But I'd, ra I'd rather the switch up. Have Megan McKay down low, have Anna Lee up high, so she has the ability and, and the, the more proficiency of the pass. Watch the blitz arms. Now to Cole, as you mentioned, a quiet night scoring-wise for Beck, just the two points. Hits the deck, Harmon gets the rebound and extends Southside's lead. And for 31, she's actually got a fair bit of athleticism behind her as well. She she has a strength and conditioning background. I think she also coaches in that space as well at Danny Nong with some juniors. Um, and you can see that in the way she plays. So she obviously knows how to look after her body and be professional. Levy, little floater. McKay slaps it back out. Wilson. Garrick from the corner. He's good. And, and Maddie fire up in the second half, up to five points. And that's what you want from Garrick, that air time of that pass. She's stepping into the shot and she's nailing it. We've seen in her career her ability to nail those shots. And Maddie Rochi just punishing them down on the other end. You've got to be better at that. You just hit a three. You've got some momentum, Bendigo. But then Maddie Rochi, you know, coast to coast and finishes with a layup. Up to three points tonight, Maddie. Long two here from Anna Lee. Won't go. She receives from Cole. Now Amy. Back to Cole. Blitz arms. And the corner is good. 15 for Sarah. Margin out to six. Good pressure, Matty Rochi. Couldn't quite prevent the pass. Reaching McKay. Now Maley tries to work inside. Won't go. McKay. Cole protects the ball. And it bursts away. Rochi of the Amy variety to Maddie. Heavy collision there between Blitzarts and Garrick. And Maddie Rochi starting to get busy. 29 points the other night. Just one in the first half this evening. She's been mainly the facilitator. She's had six assists. So playing two different roles, and now she's starting to get busy scoring-wise as well as the margin sneaks out to eight points. I really like this give-and-go action, but what I even like even more is her ability to pull up. She didn't try and get all the way to the rack on this two-player game with Blitzarv. She just pulled up knowing that that was where the position and the space was and backed herself to make that nice little jumper. So margin sneaks back out to eight points for Southside. Cheryl Chambers would be pleased you'd expect, Jenny. Feels like the game's been on south sides. They've been dictating the terms for most of the night. And I think it's been on the back of their defensive zone, 2-3. They've really slowed the pace of the game down. It, it, it's never pretty to watch, but I actually think it's worked in their favour and, and we're here to, to win, not to look pretty. And uh, right now it's been a, a real good factor for them and I'm and no doubt they won't be changing out that out of that anytime soon. If Now if I'm on the other end of the bench and I'm with Tracy York, it's got to be better, quicker ball movement. Try and get some penetration against that zone. Collapse the kick out and either re-penetrate again or take the outside shot and continue to crash the glass because we know how phenomenal they are at that. FIBA's flagship competition, the FIBA World Basketball Women's World Cup, heading to Australia in September. Ten action-packed days in Sydney at Olympic Park. 
12 nations battling it out for the world title. Get your tickets at womensworldcup.basketball. Cannot wait for that. Will Annalie Maley be a part of it in the green and gold? We'll have to wait and see. Garrick to Wilson. Bendigo now need a couple of good offensive sets to just get back into the rhythm of the game. Long ball from Wilson won't go. Bow through her hands. Nice work from Laby. Second opportunity here for Bendigo. Back out to Wilson. She drives. Little floater won't go. They'll get a third opportunity here. Maley. Wilson, and finally they make Southside pay. Three really important points, gets the margin back to five. And that comes off three offensive rebounds in one set that eventually you think, well, uh, the, the Bendigo Spirit are going to score off this, and they luckily did, and, and made Southside Flyers pay there by not being able to pick up and, and scrap that ball on the defensive rebounds. Cole from the free throw line. A little flat, won't go. Mainly the hustle, as per usual. Off to Garrick. The screen from Bogue. Rochi is always a defensive pest. Wilson got Harmon off her feet. And a good minute here for the Spirit. Good minutes for Ali Wilson. She just drained that three. You saw Harmon close her out long, thinking that she was going to take that three again, and, and she would have um, had she had the space. But great recognition of that close out, able to use her athleticism, put the ball on the floor, and, and then draw the foul and, and get herself to the foul line. So a chance to reduce the margin back to two. On a six-point run, this would be for Ali Wilson. Can't get it to drop. Rochi double team, flips it over the top to Blitz Arves. Now back to Amy. Cole gets to the rack. Nice little two from Beck Cole. She's up to four points. Bogue to Garrick. Wilson again from the corner. Maley out rebounds Cole. Let's flip back out to Bogue. Ali will put up another. Foul called off the ball. And you think if they could just nail a couple of those threes, a three of 13, Bendigo, 23% from deep, they could just hit a couple. It might just end up making Southside Flyers have to get out of that zone. But the good thing is that they're crashing the offensive glass, 18 offensive rebounds. And that's the thing that you give up when you're playing a zone is the offensive rebounds and the three ball. They're, they're willing to sacrifice that. They've got to do a better, a better job, though, on, on cleaning up the, board, the defensive boards. So it was Maley and Blitzarves wrestling off the ball. They both hit the deck. Blitzarves not overly impressed with the call, which went Maley's way. Levy thinks about getting an inboard to Garrick. Instead, she goes a little pass under the bucket to Bogue, who just can't quite control it. She comes back again. Great scrap, Carly Bogue. Off to Maley. Now Garrick. Maley under the hoop. Gets the board. And the two. Cole. Jerry loses the handle. And now it's Bendigo that have the momentum. After Southside got out to an eight-point lead. Bendigo fighting back. It's Garrick versus O'Hay. They go at it again. Maddie gets the call on this occasion. Here's another look. Two fierce competitors, Jenna O'Hay and Maddie Garrick. Wilson. Garrick versus Cole. Bogue, important board underneath, and Bendigo getting the job done under the basket right now. I really love that out-of-bounds play, really well executed. Matty Garrick got a great look, even though it didn't fall, but Bendigo doing Bendigo things yet again and, and crashing those, those boards and giving themselves second-chance opportunities. 20 offensive rebounds now for the game. And then scrapping defensively to force the turnover against Cole. Laby to Bogue. Shot won't go. Blitzarves does well, controls it, having a great night. Flips to O'Hay. Jerry. Now Rochi calls Blitzarves across to put the screen on Levy. She obliges. 
Now kicks it out. Blitzarves to O'Hay in the corner. Shot clock down to six. Bodies hit the floor again. Blitzarves steps through. It flips out. Jerry, Cole. Shot clock expires and she nails it. And she puts those hands up with thank goodness. I mean, she hasn't had many looks tonight. She's only had five shots for the game. Seven points now. But we know that she's shooting at a great clip this season. Probably the best in her career. 46% from deep. And finally, one goes down and a much-needed bucket for the Southside Flyers. They're back out to a four-point lead. Garrick to respond for three. Oh! All net. Oh! The three-on-three three Australian tandem in Garrick and uh, Cole going at it, both dra draining threes in the last two possessions. So back to one point. Once again, three and a half left in the third. Got ourselves a ball game. Flipped out. Jerry to Cole. As the shot clock expires, she finds the bottom of the basket. And then Maddie goes down the other end and responds. And we still, at one point, the difference. Southside looking to snap a four-game losing streak. Bendigo looking to maintain their winning momentum. They've won three of their last four. And the hardest thing for the Southside Flyers, if, if they're not able to get over the line in this one, we've still got plenty of time, is they've got to go home and at home against Dandenong, which is always nice to play at home, but they've got to face the UC Caps, who are, are fighting very hard to finish in that top two position after losing one at home to the Melbourne Boomers just um, in the last round 12. Cheryl Chambers, remarkably upbeat this week. We mentioned she was philosophical. Hey, that sport, all we can control is how we prepare, how we turn up, how we turn out, the effort we put in. She's been pleased with all of those things from her squad this year. And it's been a season for resilience, hasn't it? In many different ways. And both these sides have shown it in different ways. They both had to deal with all sorts of scheduling issues and COVID-related issues. Both have been racked by it at certain times. And both have had tough times on the court. Right now it's Southside's turn. And Benny Go have managed to work through their tough times and come out the other side. Jerry's triple teamed, gets it out to Rochi. And now it's Southside's turn to grit their teeth and bite down hard. Snap this losing streak as O'Hay finds Amy Rochi from the corner. And they're back out to a three-point lead. Amy Rochi's just solid. You know, she's not going to come out and give you 20, but she'll give you what's required for the team. And, and that was a big bucket. Three seconds left on the shot clock and was able to nail it. Garrick again, starting to feel it. And when Garrick and Wilson both get going and provide some scoring assistance, Bendigo look infinitely better on offense. Wilson's got 14, Garrick and McKay 11 apiece, and mainly their fourth high score tonight with 10. Blitzarves, been outstanding. Not on this occasion, couldn't quite. Bogue off to Levy, scores level two and a half left in the third. These two teams were locked together at three-quarter time on Saturday night. Well done, Rochi. Active hands. Didn't give up on the play, but couldn't finish. Garrick brings it back for the spirit. Wilson to Levy. Maley sets up one-on-one -on -one against Amy Rochi. Bogue finds that matchup. She'll kick it out. Levy will put up the long ball. Won't go. Bodies at the floor. Offensive foul. Against Annalie Maley. And that's what you've got to do against Annalie Maley. Great job here from Rochi, just to give her a bit of space. And, you know, she wants to put it to the floor. But Annalie is going to go to the rim on every rebound, offensively, defensively. Anyone that's closing out to her or on her in that matchup scenario, you just have to face guard her and put her under pressure to not get any, any sniff of the rim at all. And that was great job there by Amy Rochi. The Rochies combine. Amy to Maddie. Amy marrying Maddie's brother Christian. Blitzarves tries to slip through, and in fact, it's Jerry rather. And she'll go to the line for a couple. Here's another look. Rachel Jerry having a real impact tonight. Came on early. Got Southside going when they needed a bit of a spark off the bench. It was O'Hay and Jarry who did it. And now to restore their lead late in the third. And she does. Playing game 193 tonight. So coming up on a really important milestone, the two-time champion with Bulleen in 2011. And the Boomers will celebrate. 
the anniversary, the 10th anniversary of that one and only championship this Sunday at Parkville. And then with the Flyers in 2020, Rachel Jarry. Her experience has been critical tonight. Levy to Maley. Garrick to Wilson. Bogue sets up in the key. There's Levy. Bogue, Levy draws a crowd, gives it out to Wilson. Rattles off the iron and it's taken by Gaze. Off to O'Hay. Nice find from Rochi to Blitzarves. Lovely ball from Amy Rochi. And that was all set up from Blitzarves herself in that first initial kick down and Jenna had the catch on the wing that she set up her player who had to front her and I think it was Bogues in the paint and then she just got that position on ball reversal and had a nice little feed from Amy Rochi. Wilson's wide open and that's been trouble tonight. Ali's having a night out. She's up to 17 points. Maddie to Amy once again. Blitzarves from the free throw line. She's having a good night as well. So Wilson and Blitzarves going bucket for bucket. Sarah's up to 19. Levy to Garrick. Oh, hey, scraps for the rebound against Bogue. And you can see here this nice little action. Jenna Hay cuts low to the post, which drags the, her defender down. Creates space at that, that elbow action or free throw line, shall we say. And, and Sarah Blitzarv was just able to cut into her wake and find herself for a nice jumper. So possession arrow with Bendigo. Bogue, the inbound play, is short. So two second differential, Maddie's just spotted that. She said, let's just slow this right down and make sure we get the last shot. Kate Gaze goes, nah, don't think so. Amy Rochi collects it. Off to O'Hay. Gaze pulls the trigger again. Short once more. Now Maley and Bendigo have enough time to get the last shot away. Garrick, can they tie it up with a three? Oh. She runs straight into Maddie Rochi, does a fantastic job. And at three quarter time, it's the reigning champs by three points. They're pumped up on the bench. It's Southside 58, Bendigo 55. Three-point game in Hobart. Final change. And it is Southside who have led narrowly at every change. Two points at the quarter, two at the half. And now three points at three-quarter time as Cheryl Chambers addresses her troops. Southside looking to snap their four-game losing streak. There's a real good vibe and energy on that Southside bench right now, Jenny Screen. I, th I think there's a great vibe on both teams. You can see that both benches are getting up and about. I love the, the input from Abby Bishop there, just playing a bit of a coach as well. And, and then you can see, um, you know, Tracy York imploring her players uh, from the sidelines as well. It, it's, it's really good to see. But now the Southside flies, and maybe it wasn't even mentioned, but Saturday night it went 10 points to 26. Um, and that is not something that they will want to uh, go to again in terms of their output. So expect to be quarter from Southside Flyers. Attention to detail in this fourth. And if there any chance of getting this win, they've got to keep Bendigo, as we say. And I feel like we're harping on all the time off the glass. Amy Rochi to Blitzarves as we start the final term. 
Maddie backs out. Now wants to drive on Bogue. Just lost her step a little. And it affected the shot. Carly off to Levy. Gaze the screen from Maylie. Now Levy to Garrick. Wilson has been hot hand tonight. Bo gets it, wants to go at Blitzarves. Can't get it to go the first time. Keep scrapping. Maylie almost tackled by Gaze. And down goes Kate the second time. Both teams are getting that catch at the foul line. Just way too easy. Um, anyone that's def ooh, anyone that's defending them is just getting, you know, what I'd like to say, their face cut a little bit too easily. They've got to bump the cutters a little bit more and, and make it a little bit tougher on the catch there at the elbow or the foul line. Screen by name, screen by nature. <laughs> yeah. Three-point lead to the Flyers. Early going in this final term. As Jenny mentioned, Bendigo exploded away. They were level at three-quarter time on Saturday night. They put on 26 to 10 in the final term. Loose pass inboard from Levy and bursting onto that at speed was Amy Rocci. Adds another two. How it's a five-point game. How were the Jets on that one? Just see ball, get ball from Amy Rocci. Turning back the clock just a little bit. Not that she's that old, but uh, a great huge bucket there from Miss Rocci. Mainly to Garrick. Now to Wilson. Shot clock runs down to five again. Levy against Amy Rocci. Pulls up for the J. It's short. Here's Amy with the ball once again. Thought about the little give through to Blitzarves. Thought she was cutting. Instead, she's posting up. Well done, Levy. The two on one. But then they both leave Blitzarves alone and she makes them pay. Sarah's up to 21. And that's a great job by Sarah, considering she's averaging 14 points a game and six rebounds. As we see Rochi just doing those things that I spoke about, the, the glue things, getting a couple of assists, a couple of steals, and here she finds her, her teammate, Sarah Blitzarv. Probably could have taken the open shot, but thought better of it, but, and then was able to find Sarah Blitzarv's down low for a three-point play. Garrick and Levy both drawn to the ball carrier. Blitzarv's just sagged off, got to the hoop, and makes it a three-point play. Southside starting this final term in fine style. They've added the first five points. The margin now eight. Maley to Levy. Good screen there from McKay. Allows Levy to get to the free throw line. Shot won't drop. McKay, again, good hands. Amy Rochi. Will still be a Bendigo ball. Single digits once again. And a foul off the ball against Megan McKay versus Sarah Blitzarbs. And Southside starting to feel it here. We didn't see Megan McKay a lot in that third quarter. She sat a lot on the bench and, and probably would take a little bit longer to get into this fourth quarter. But I tell you, that zone is just wreaking havoc a little bit with Bendigo right now. And now a scrap mid-court. Possession arrow, jump ball. It was Rochi and Maylee. And coming into assist was Goulding. Just going to have to clean the court there when the players hit the deck, get rid of any moisture. You know, Maylie's played 31 minutes and probably is going to see out the rest of the game. So I think she's had one minute rest for the game. Then you put her at the one at the top of the zone in the or the press, I should say, one, two, two action and ask her to be that that devil and, and get into the pockets of uh, the opponents. And she does it so well. But to do that and play the amount of points the minute she's playing and get on the glass, it's just phenomenal. She has such an aerobic engine. Number one for minutes per game this season in the entire competition. McKay tries with the hook but can't get it to drop. And here's a chance for Southside to get it out to a double-figure lead here early in this final term. Amy to Blitzarves to Maddie. Now back to Amy. Steps around Goulding. Draws a crowd but turns it over to Wilson. Now Levy. Can Bendigo get a bit of offensive flow in this final term? Goulding in the corner will go herself. They need three, and she provides. Nice job there from Goulding. She hasn't seen much of the court tonight. Um, obviously, Garrick's been having some great, great minutes, but she's averaging normally five points. But as Laurie mentioned on, on Saturday night in the coverage, she just plays her role really well. Rochi against Goulding. Lovely find inside. O'Hay then kicks it out. Amy Rochi to Gaze. Pulls up and drains another two. Margin back to seven. Levy, good handles. Gets past both the Rochies. 
foul called. Be the third on Sarah Blitzarves. As we see a nice cut here by Jenna Hay, and then just great ball movement from the south side flies. Kate Gaze missed two uh, open shots, which she would normally make at the end of the third, and was able to, you know, trust herself and back herself to be able to put the ball on the deck and, and find a nice two point shot there. And Mirachi takes a seat. Been really busy in this second half. Just suggesting there to the physio, she might have just rolled that left ankle. You can just see her explaining the situation. Down from Lady Maley stands under the hoop. It's been a constant play all night. I don't know if Tessa Lady wanted to pass her the ball there. I'm like, she's open. She's open. She's still open. Okay, now I'll give it to her. Path open for Beck Cole. She couldn't get it to drop either. Lady has got Goulding pushing to the left. She'll go herself from the top of the arc. And hey, off to Maddie Rochi. Pops it over the top to Blitzarves. Now goes back looking for Maddie. To the corner, smothered off gaze, turnover comes, Goulding to Levy. Benigo need a couple of stops here, they trail by five. Mainly back to Tessa. McKay wants position against Blitzarbs, works on it, goes left, comes back to the right, draws the foul, and will go to the line to shoot two. And you saw Southside Flyers went back into a little bit of a man-to-man -man there. Now, whether that was meant to happen because they didn't get the finish and the bucket down the other end. But great footwork here by Megan McKay. And I thought Blitzarves did a great job defensively. But then Maddie Rochi just coming in and bailing her out at the, at the last second and allowing McKay to get herself to the foul line. So Megan McKay, 11 points tonight to go with her 10 boards. So a double-double for Megan. And I think in the years to come, a double-double for her will be, will be expected um, with what she, we've seen this year. And if she stays in Bendigo next year, I'm not sure if she signed a multi-year deal or, you know, but I'm sure other clubs will be coming. But I'm sure they'll be keen to sign her too. Yeah, exactly. It's been outstanding. She'll be priority. Make sure they get the likes of all these youngsters like Maylie and McKay and lock them away. And then you've got Wilson and Levy that provide experience and Garrick as well. So they're starting to get that balance of youth and experience that you need. And you've also got to remember that these are two teams that don't really have a dominant import. If you think of uh, Canberra, uh, they've got Sykes. If you think of the Boomers, they've got Mitchell and they've got Lindsay Allen. Like that, These two teams are, you know, yes, whilst they have Americans in their teams, they're not the dominant, mm. you know, WNBA superstars that we have in, in other teams. So for them to battle it out as they are with the... The, the players that they have is also testament to what they're able to do. And no marquee, no no import for Bendigo. No Leilani Mitchell was a marquee player. No import either. And again, the same, as you said, for Southside, who've gone all local in 2022. Another foul. And I almost feel like we're going back to the first quarter. Uh, you can see here, great great hands from Maylie, but then they push out and on, on offense. Megan McKay runs the lane. Rim runs really well. She gets Emily Harmon there physically on her back, and we see that relationship between the four and the five happening again like we did in the first quarter. Brilliantly read from Beck Cole. Cuts off the inbound pass and then draws a cheek foul on Goulding. So it's a game that's ebbed and flowed. There's never been more than about eight points in it. Right now it's south side by three. Rochi brings it up the floor. Jerry back to Maddie. Little hand in there from Tess are enough to knock it out of bounds. Remaina flies ball. Blitz arms with 22 points leads the game. Wilson has 17 for Bendigo. She off to Cole, pulls up for two, can't make it, but Blitzarves keeps it alive. Jerry Harmon wants to work towards the line. Turnover comes. Have a look at that count, 23 offensive rebounds to eight, and somehow Southside Flyers have the lead in this game by only three, and that's probably put down to the shooting percentage of the Bendigo 
spirit at the moment. 8 of 48, 38%, 33 from deep. They've had five more looks than Southside Flyers. They've made two less. The margin sits at three. Wilson confronted by a couple. that leaves Goulding open in the corner. Oh. Maley again out of position, seemingly. Gets the board, the two, and the foul. Again, you just can't compete with her in the air. Great find here. Nice little recognition from Wilson to Goulding. But you just see Jaff there trying her hardest. But don't even look at the rim. Don't even try and compete with Maylie in the air. Just push her out of the keyway. Because she gets in that keyway somehow. I don't know. I swear she has magnets on her hands. It just finds a way to her every single time. Rachel Jarry looked to be in the ideal position. She just You saw her after the play just sort of look back as if to say, well, what more could I do? How does that happen? How does she get past me and get her? Herself into that position yeah and look to be off balance and under the ball and somehow still grab it yeah it's quite a gift and scores a level with five to play oh hey to Rochi Cole's wide open Rochi tries to find her Cole stretches and keeps it alive screen comes from Harmon Wilson sticks to the task Rochi down to five lovely move on Maley dishes it off Harmon puts it up and McKay gets the rebound, takes the tackle, bodies hit the floor with Jerry and McKay and Rachel Jerry saying, sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> Emily Harmon just forced to put up the shot with two seconds left on the clock there. And Jaffa just, just slipped a little bit, probably a, an overzealous foul, shall we say, but the referees were all over it. And right now you can see Jenna Hay trying to use her experience. They were up by six. And Bendigo just seemed to have a little bit of momentum at the moment, especially with a defensive play like that. And you just got to hope that Southside players can recollect on the back of what Jenna Hay was just saying in that huddle. Bit of skin off there for Megan McKay, just a little bit shaken up. That She's a left tough elbow. Well, that's a big cut. Yeah. Um, I mean, hurry up, physio, get some tape, wrap yep. that up. There's not enough time in this for her to be sitting out. Yeah, she's had a key role to play. 13 points, 11 boards. I'm surprised that they're allowing her just to do it. She didn't normally have to sub out, and then obviously we can see Bogues now subbing in. But, uh, you know, the pressure's on the physio right here. You don't want her out for very long. It could be a really deep cut. We don't know. There seems to be a lot of blood there. Uh, but hopefully it's, it's a quick tape job and, and back on the floor because Bendigo Spirit are going to need her at the end of this game. So Bogue will step up and take the free throw. Misses the first. So obviously none sportsmanlike yeah. was called. What do you make of that? Probably a flagrant one if we're talking, you know, the likes of NBA. Um, uh, but right now what it does is it gives Bendigo one the lead, but two another opportunity here to uh, find a bucket. Calling the inbound to Bogue. McKay still sideline getting treated. Levy. Wilson, off the ball foul. It's going Bendigo's way. And nice to see Bogues doing exactly what McKay was doing, using her size to her advantage. We know that's where their advantage is against the Southside Flyers, against the smaller lineup of O'Hay and, and Jarry, is that she's making a presence down low, and that forced the hand of the referees. And again, let's see if she can capitalise on this. Does not. Four fouls on Jarry, four on Blitzarves. Carly Bogue, 74% free throw shooter on her career. Went five for ten coming into this game. But leaves a couple on the table. Could be critical. Could be, Arjun stays at one. Could be critical indeed. And, and don't forget, Saturday night, Bendigo went 26 of 28 from the foul line. Carly Bogue, one for four tonight from the strike. Bendigo by one. Cole with the ball. Gets to the free throw line. One for eight tonight, Beck Cole. Just shots haven't dropped for her. She's got herself into some positions, but just hasn't been her night. Maley. Harassment from Maddie Rochi. Thought about the give to Levy. Here's Bo. Maley cuts through. Draws the foul. 
crafty here, watch this action. She saw Maddie Rochi just come out of stance and was overplaying her just slightly. Give and go, a very underrated skill of our game and was able to get herself to the foul line. Basket waved away. Ref said it was not in the act of shooting. Hadn't got the ball in an upward motion yet. So she'll go to the line and shoot two. She leaves one on the table as well. Is that four rebound, four of four foul shots in a, in a row or roundabouts that the, the Bendigo Spirit So there's seven for 14 from the line tonight. She makes the second. And four in this last minute, especially with McKay on the bench. It seems like she's come back onto the bench. We can see her there in the, the far of the right hand of the screen. So I wouldn't be surprised if she spends much longer on the bench. And the 340 remaining. Bendigo by two. O'Hay has it. Against Bogue, floats a little ball, baseline towards Blitzarbs, turns, spins, air ball. And Wilson collects. So chance for Bendigo to go up by a couple of possessions here. If they can work a good offensive set. Wilson to Bogue. Southside's done a great job at robbing them of their fluency tonight, Bendigo. They haven't had speed on the ball as they usually prefer. They've been forced into some slower sets. Mainly for three, huge play, and she makes it. Her first three of the game and a very, very crucial one in the context of this game. You can see a screen there and Blitzarp just getting caught out, being distracted by the dive from, from Carly Bogues. They're just a little bit too much and, well, hands down, player down and Maley makes the Southside Flyers play. Huge timeout for the Southside Flyers here. Down by five, three minutes to go with the game on the line. What's the message from Cheryl Chambers? I think better ball movement offensively. I think they've become a little bit more stagnant. They're not getting the penetrations and looks as they were in, in earlier stages of this game. And then obviously on the defensive end, it's knowing where they're going to get their points from. Wilson's going to give you points. Maley's going to give you points. But it's also one and done. Get the rebound, get the stop, whatever it is, um, or force a turnover not to allow this team that we know that loves, you know, second opportunities or second chance points. So Megan McKay back on the bench. She won't take her place on the court just yet. You can see that left arm bandaged up. You expect to see her out there sooner rather than later. Is she coming back out? No, she's going to sit. It is a five-point game. Three minutes remaining in this one in Hobart. Wednesday night, WNBL. Great to have you with us. Been an entertaining contest. It's ebbed and flowed, but it's been tight all night. Cole against Wilson. Now Rochi drives herself, draws a crowd, dishes to Blitz Arbs, and they get two back. It's a three-point game. Great find there by Rochi. Just composure in the middle of the paint to find her, her teammate, Sarah Blitz Arbs. Lady working on Rochi. Movement comes from Maley. O'Hay with a hand in there. And here's an opportunity for Southside. So either tie it up or get back within a point. Rochi goes herself. It spills. O'Hay, Amy in the corner. Back to O'Hay. Now Maddie, deep three. Not quite. And Bendigo hang on to the lead. Maley. Bogue harassed by Blitzarves. Goulding guarded by Amy Rochi. Now they switch over and O'Hay takes the job. Maddie moves on to Levy, who wants to step around Blitz Arbs. Awkward shot off. Balance is brilliant. Brilliant, and you'll take it. Tessa Levy's been pretty quiet all game, but we know that she has the ability and the experience when it comes down to the crunch time and, and there's not much time on the clock that if a bucket is needed, she is able to find it or create it. And she's also pleading for the foul there as well. There's another look. Foot on the line. Brilliant two from Tessa Levy and a critical one. It re-establishes their two-possession lead. They're up by five points with less than two on the clock. Maddie to Amy Rochi. Blitzarves back to Amy. Now to Blitzarves. Off to Maddie. Oh, hey, big three. Won't go. 
And Wilson gets the board off to Tessa. Mailey links up with Levy again. Bendigo with the luxury of time now. They're happy to run the clock down. Laby steps around O'Hay, steps inside. Little dish to Bogue is clever. How good is Bogues, you know, stepping in for McKay at the crucial point of this game? How good has she been in these last three minutes? Just doing the little things, setting good screens, using her body, and then being able to find herself in the right place at the right time for her, her guards and her teammates in order to find her and to finish at this time of the clock also is, is phenomenal. Great job by Carly Bogue. The 30-year-old, originally from Tamworth. Spent some time in the US, spent some time in France and Finland. Her first year at the Spirit, playing game number 97 tonight. And Carly Bogue's experience coming to the fore. Benigo by seven. But I still feel like there's a lot of time in this game. Yeah. Um, if I'm Southside Flyers, we know how potent they can be from deep. Um, and they've just got to get a good play here, execute well, get some great movement ball movement, player movement, even some screening action, go to some high-low even, um, and then hopefully get a good look. Then they've got to get two consecutive stops against Bendigo without allowing an offensive rebound, and then they might have a sniff. Amy Rochi with the inbound. Big play here. She gets it back from Blitzarves. Feeds it through. Sarah finds it. Now Maddie Rochi again wants to drive. Wilson have it covered, but concedes the foul, and Rochi will head to the line to shoot two. And this is finding something out of nothing. I'm glad that they didn't settle for a long three. Um, in this fourth quarter. It's something that they haven't been doing well. They've only scored nine points for this quarter, their lowest to date out of the four. But good to see Maddie Rochi challenging herself and challenging her defender for not rewarding herself, missing her first foul shot. It's been a problem tonight, hasn't it? She's an 80% free throw shooter across her career, going at 76% this season. Makes one of two there. Six point game. Minute remaining. Levy harassed up the court by Amy Rochi. Off to Maley. So Southside pressing high now. Levy versus Rochi. Shot clock down to single digits. Double teamed. Garrick's open. Bogue in the corner. Maley cuts to the hoop. Garrick a long three. It's short and out. And Southside ball. Two possession game. 45 seconds left. They need a quick score here to allow themselves the last possession of the game. Hopefully, if they're able to get a stop. Rochi to her sister-in-law. Amy puts it up, won't go. Maley pulls down a huge board. And now Bendigo really in the box seat. They lead by six. Happy to run some time off the clock here. Levy will just run it around. In the end, the foul comes with 25.6 seconds remaining. And Bendigo with a chance to go to the line and make it a three possession game. Right idea here from the Southside Flyers. They had to get a quick look, whether it was a two or a three, in order to give themselves an opportunity to get a stop down the other end, potentially fouling the wrong person in Tessa Levy. She has the experience and the capabilities to knock them down from the foul line and probably is one of the better foul shooters in her team. But another quick look is needed from the Southside Flyers here. Marching out to eight. Needs something special from here. Can Blitzarves deliver it short once again? Garrick gets the board and is fouled. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be all she wrote in this one. And Bendigo again yet finding a way. I thought Southside Flyers have done a great job. The majority of the game at that last quarter, just getting away from them, perhaps fatigue, 20 points to 10. Um, they'd be really disappointed considering the first three quarters and how good they were. The frustrated Matty Rochi fouls out of the game. 
Six points, five rebounds, eight assists for her this evening. Garrick tacks on another point. She's up to 12. Ten-point game. Bendigo's biggest lead of the night. Might end up being their winning margin. Southside. One last play. Gaze. Cole. Gets to the rack. Lays in a consolation too. And the Spirit have won four out of five. They roll the reigning champions for the second time in five days. Keep their slim finals hopes alive. Well, the Flyers have dropped five straight as their tough season just keeps getting tougher. They'll head home to host Canberra on Saturday night. But the confidence and the belief and the chemistry in this Bendigo side, what a remarkable turnaround it's been. The belief and the spirit has been there all year, if you'll pardon the pun. Now they're getting the results to go with it. They are, and I think they've enjoyed playing down, down south in Tasmania. They're, they're, they're actually better on the road than what they are at home. They average almost 80 points per game, and, and they were just two points off that tonight. But, you know, credit to them. They, they held Southside Flyers. You thought the momentum was coming in the fourth quarter with Southside, the way they finished off that third quarter. But look at them now. You can see how excited they are to get two wins on the trot um, after that loss uh, on Thursday night. And, and now... They've got to see, well, what's next? Tracy York addresses her players. Started one and six. And now they've won four of their last five. Been a wonderful turnaround. And Ali Wilson has been a central piece of it at both ends of the floor. Had another outstanding night tonight. Finished with 17 points. She joins us now. Ali, congratulations. Four wins out of five. What a remarkable turnaround this has been. Remarkable from the outside. But I know that you guys have been working so hard on the inside and now you're starting to get the results for those efforts. Yeah, absolutely. I think that we were a bit disrupted initially, um, people in and out, and now that we're really starting to gel, um, we're in a bit of a role here. Um, and we have a really, really fast uh, style of game and we're playing really well at the moment. Ali, congratulations on the win. It was a great performance from you guys. Talk to me about your own game. You've only just come in late in the season to the, the Bendigo spirit, but you're just relishing in your opportunities. You finished with 17 points tonight. You seem like you've got a new lease on life in, in terms of the way you're playing your basketball at the moment. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I just try to bring energy and effort in any way that I can. You know, I try to be a good defender on the defensive end and, and I'll shoot the ball as well. Um, so I'm just trying to bring uh, whatever I can to make this team be successful. Southside Flyers threw a 2-3 zone at you for practically the majority of the game, except they went away from in the fourth. What was the message from Tracy York? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you just want, don't want to shoot the three. You get, to get, a, get a bit hesitant offensively. What was the message from her? Yeah, she just wanted us to keep moving the ball. Um, yeah, like you said, don't take too many outside shots. Pump the ball inside. You know, we've got a big girl in Meg down there, so we were trying to get it in as much as we could. Talk to me about Megan McKay. You just brought her up there. She was phenomenal on Saturday night with 22 points. She seems yeah. to be getting better and better. Is she a focal point? We know Annalie Maley is so dominant for your team, but I love what she's contributing now, and she seems like she's coming of age herself. Yeah, definitely. Meg is a big part of our group. You know, she's a big, strong body. She's hard to guard at training. So we're trying to pump the ball to her as much as we can. And she's finishing really well around the rim under contact too, which is great. Ali, tell us about the chemistry of this group. It does take time. It was such a new group, a, a whole new starting five. Then you came in leading into game two. You, you mentioned it's been a stop-start sort of a season, but it sort of feels like you've found your identity as a team and everyone sort of found their niche inside that team. Yeah, certainly. As I said before, it's been really disrupted. Um, so now that we've finally been able to get some games and trainings under our belt and really be able to play with our core group, um, yeah, as I said, we're, we're rolling at the moment and we play a really fast-paced, um, good-to-watch uh, game of basketball. So, um, yeah, it's been really good. You might run out of games to make the finals. You're certainly playing well enough to make the finals. This weekend, you get an opportunity to help shape the finals at the very least when you take on the Boomers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the girls uh, got a win against them earlier on in the season. Um, so we'll try to bring that same style of play and um, we'll see what we can do. Thanks very much for your time, Ali. We've really enjoyed the emergence of this team and your role in it. Congratulations on the win. Good luck for the weekend. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Ali Wilson joining us from Hobart. And the spirit 
have won four out of five. And after they'd gone one and six to start the season, you could have written your own ticket, Jenny, on them turning it around like this. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you wouldn't have betted on them, especially last Thursday when they were down 30 to, 32 to two in that game against Adelaide but somehow they just get it done and it, it's on the back of their second efforts their ability to crash the boards and and now they're getting contributions offensively as well not only from Annalie Maley but Wilson from Garrick there on screen there and occasionally from Tessa Levy she doesn't have to contribute all the time she did on Thursday night in their loss but when it matters when a score is needed she will find either someone to score and create an assist or she'll create her own, and she was sensational down the stretch in the fourth. From a Flyers' perspective, the effort and the endeavour was definitely there tonight. Did fatigue bite in the final quarter? We know they've had a week of disruption, and they've had three or four girls that have all been ill. Yeah, potentially. Uh, you, you know, we can't take any way, anything away from the Bendigo Flyers because I think they ultimately came away with a great win in the terms of the way they played. Southside Flyers, it's just been one of those seasons um, and it just seems to keep going from bad to worse for them. But there were some great positives out of that game and I think Cheryl will know that and reinforce that in the in the change rooms after this one. Um, but, you know, credit to Bendigo. If, they, if teams are going to allow them to have 24 offensive rebounds a game, well, they're going to be pretty tough to beat. Well, round 13 Indigenous round continues with a Saturday triple header of WNBL action. So much to look forward to. First up, it's the fire, fire heading to Adelaide to take on the Lightning from 4.30. That'll be a massive game in the race for the top four and the top two. The Lightning and the Fire, that'll be a beauty. Oh, it will indeed, because we know how much or how important this is to the Lightning. They're not great at home, though. The Fire, they've got nothing to lose. Uh, they're down on their players. Nicholson's out as well. Billings, uh, she didn't play much against the Melbourne Boomers the other night, so expect her to step up. And then I want to see Zatina Acuso get it done as well. The Flyers and the Caps, the fourth-place Caps, still in with a shot at a top-two finish. They are, and they're playing some phenomenal basketball headed by coach um, Paul Goris. It's very nice to watch. Brittany Sykes, we know, is in the MVP race, and, and she'll be doing a great job defensively and offensively as well. Then it's top versus bottom as the Perth Lynx host the Sydney Uni Flames. Perth looking to keep their five-game winning streak rolling. And they're back at home, which is really nice. They get to be at home in front of their own fans. They haven't done that for a very long time. I know they'll be relishing those opportunities. Sammy Whitcomb comes back from being in Serbia, having a great time in the green and gold, and hopefully we see Mabry um, bring it, and she'll be able to play. Uh, obviously, we know that she's been injured for quite some time. And then the fourth leg of that massive afternoon, sorry, the third leg of that massive triple header, on, sorry, on Sunday, it's the Boomers getting confused. Sunday, it's the Boomers hosting the Spirit in Parkville, 3 p.m. Eastern. Melbourne belatedly celebrating the 10th anniversary of their 2011 championship. It's going to be a wonderful occasion. Bendigo will be keen to spoil that party. And to be honest, the way Bendigo are playing right now, they will trouble any team. They will, and they're going to take it to Melbourne Boomers. They have nothing to lose against the Boomers. We know they have beaten them as well. So uh, the Boomers need to be on the watch in terms of what they're able to do, keep Annalie Maley off the boards. Um, but it'll be nice to see them um, give tribute and pay tribute to their championship back um, when they won back in the day, especially with Mel Tim Michelle Timms. And shout out to Timsy. She's doing the draw tomorrow for the uh, the World Cup, um, which will be here in Sydney in September. So the pressure is on you, Timsy, to give Australia a <laughs> Very, very good draw uh, for the World Cup, um, which will be on home soil. You've always delivered for the Opals, Timsey. We have complete faith and confidence in you. So lots to look forward to this weekend. Of course, you'll see every game live right here on KO. Well, that wraps up our Wednesday night coverage. Jenny, a pleasure as always. It was, and it was a great contest. Shout out to both teams. Benigo Spirit, congratulations to them. They have won four of their last five. They've turned their season around in style. They've knocked off last year's reigning premiers for the second time in five days. Join us for more WNBL action when our Saturday triple header tips off from 4.30 with the lightning and the fire right here on KO. On behalf of our entire production team, thanks so much for watching. Have a great night.